Hi, I'm Elena and welcome back to 30 Books in 30 Days. This is week three, which we're already doing great. Yeah, we're doing fine. Today is day 17 of this challenge and I've read 15 books. So the goal for this week is to catch up. So this vlog is going to spend over seven days, but I want to read nine books so that I am caught up and I don't have to stress the last week. I'm currently reading one book that is not going to help with that, but I decided to pick it up as my nighttime audiobook and that is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. <laughs> this will be third. I think the third out of... No, it's the third time I'm reading this book and Petra from Petra You said that she was going to read this for Jane Austen July as an audiobook before bed and I thought that is such a good idea. So I picked up the one that is narrated by Rosamund Pai. She plays Jane in the 2005 Pride and Prejudice adaptation. I am liking her narration but she does Mrs. Bennet in a very annoying way. Every narrator does. Mrs. Bennet is just such a difficult character but it's great before falling asleep and I'm I'm not far in. I'm on chapter 11. Approximately 60 pages in and this book is? I'm not sure. A little over 400 pages. I don't know if I'm going to finish it this week. I'll just be listening to it before falling asleep. This is my audiobook for this week. I might also just have it as my primary audiobook. I usually have two, a daytime and a nighttime audiobook <laughs> because that is how specific I am. Then I have three books from my TBR that I would like to read this week. The first one I have shown you in every vlog but in this vlog I'm actually going to read it and that is Cheerful Weather for the Wedding. I'm going to read oops, The Trial by Franz Kafka and I'm going to read the Year of the Monkey by Patty Smith. So that would make four books. So we have to pick another five. And I think I'm going to mainly focus on audiobooks. So I'm going to show you a few that I'm interested in that are on my list. Almost forgot to show you this one. I ordered this one because I saw it on Charlotte's wrap up from Connie Reads. And this is Once Upon a Town, which is the misadventures of a rare bookseller. And this sounded a lot of fun. It's a little over 200 pages, but it has a big font. As you can see, I love this kind of niche low-key non-fiction so i think i'm going to have a lot of fun with this and it will be a great break from just reading the classics that i have on the tbr for now that's book number five so we need four more i'm not going to make a definite tbr because i don't want to stress myself out just a pile of possibilities let me tell you what i mean i'm in a non-fiction mood and i've never read anything by that author then a uh, foster by claire keegan who is an irish author who wrote small little things something like that is the christmas story that i read last year for this challenge as well and i really really love cousin phillips by elizabeth gaskell it's three hours so i guess it's a novella a creek myth retelling by ellie smith if you've seen last week's vlog i've been reading ellie smith and i've been enjoying their writing this is i think a short story as well it's an hour long i have a few graphic novels that i could read but i think i'm almost through my script maximum of what i can listen to again rent is in vlog number one but they're so vague but i think i won't be able to pick up graphic novels and then children of paradise by camilla grudova which was on the women's prize long list and it sounds really fascinating it's about a group of people who work in a movie theater and the last one is also a novella this is mrs caliban by rachel ingalls I think that's how you say your name. So those are a few options. If I feel like a romance, I also have People We Meet Off Vacation by Emily Henry on the TBR, but I might save that one for next week. This is the plan. And I'm also DIYing, painting, doing stuff. I will try to remember to film it and then we can go on the journey together as well. So let's go. <laughs> Wednesday I feel like I'm coming down with something so apologies for the low energy vibes but yesterday I listened to Mrs. Caliban and I give this five stars. Wonderful start to this vlog. Mrs. Caliban is about a housewife who has a very detached life from her husband. They have had some tragedy in their marriage and they basically live separate lives and they don't really care about each other anymore and then on the news she sees something about a lizard-like man. Think the shape of water, the creature from the Black Lagoon. 
that kind of man. I was reading this and I was like, the shape of water is so similar how is this not an adaptation? But I kind of changed my mind about it as I finished this novella. The creature escapes from a place where he is very mistreated by scientists and then she starts to help him. They really start to get interested in each other in a romantic way, in a sexual way, and then she explores the affair she has with him. And then later in the novella, a lot of different things explode. This was just such a perfect novella. I think the pacing, the plot, everything just tied together so well. I think there were a lot of messages in the novella as well about how we treat people who are different from us and about how the news reports certain things. This was written in the 1980s, so it's a bit of an older one, but I really, really enjoyed it and it was a glowing five stars. I would highly recommend this, especially for something like a readathon. This was out of print until 2017, which is the same year as The Shape of Water came out. So I do find that all a little bit strange, if you love The Shape of Water, the film by Guillermo del Toro, you will love the novella as well. I prefer the novella over the film. I think maybe the novella is, in a political way, a little bit more straight... not straightforward. I think it's a bit more reaching towards its goal, where the film is more ex about exploring sexuality, I think, which I enjoyed as well. It didn't really do what I wanted to do the film, because it was, of course, a male director talking about female sexuality, and I think that didn't fully work for me, whereas this is a woman writing about female sexuality and about romance from the perspective of that housewife. Five stars and I also started reading Cheerful Weather for the Wedding. I'm halfway through with that one now. We'll finish it today. This is way more challenging than I thought it would be. I thought it was quite a straightforward short story novella-like. We meet a big group of people with the main characters having a mother and a daughter. The daughter is called Dolly and it's her wedding and it's just people having lunch and eating together and just being in the house together before the wedding starts. And it's quite complicated because we have so many characters. We jump back and forth. So I find it quite challenging to read and it's definitely not a sit down and read it in one go kind of book. It's like equally challenging as I think Virginia Woolf is. The writing style is very different though. I don't know if I've mentioned it. Virginia Woolf and her husband published this book in their publishing press. I also started Let Me Tell You What I Mean by Joan Didion, which is I think a collection of her writings. I've listened to like half an hour of that so not much to tell here but those are the books that I'm in the middle of. Still Pride and Prejudice of course. I've gotten to one of the funny parts. All I'm going to say is potato and then you know. It'll take a while for me to finish that. But it's really lovely to get back into a favorite, which I mean it will be a five star again. I don't think I need to re-rate this one. But yeah, I hope I don't really get sick because I'm feeling a bit shitty. But uh, yeah, let's read. Thursday and I did indeed finish Cheerful Weather for the Wedding and unfortunately 
I was a little bit disappointed by this. It really wasn't kind of what I was hoping for it. I like the idea of the storyline and I saw a movie trailer and I feel like that did it more for me than the book because I think the book was fake at points. How do I say this? It had a great plot but it didn't really rely on the plot. It really relied on the writing and I just didn't really connect with the writing. I didn't really love it. And so I gave this three stars. Again, I think the story has great potential but I just didn't really vibe with the writing. We had a lot of different characters in one novella so it was really hard work to read actually especially for a novella which I can usually read in a sitting but I think I needed like three sittings for this novella and it's a little over 100 pages so it was very labor heavy but I, I can see how it's like well written how it's a good story how the writing has a lot of layers and meaning maybe just a time and place kind of thing but this wasn't for me right now so that is a three star and then I started listening to let me tell you what I mean by Joan Didion I don't remember if I told you about it yesterday but this is a collection of her non-fiction writings I think a collection of her columns mainly written in the 60s so far my favorite is the one about Nancy Reagan. It talks about how she was a journalist who was writing a piece on Nancy Reagan and a lot of other photographers and journalists were there at the same time. This was when Ronald Reagan was a governor and not a president yet and how everything she was doing was very performative and she writes it in a very fun and witty way. Her tone is also very sarcastic which I'm enjoying. I'm halfway through with the audiobook right now so my goal is kind of to finish that today. Yesterday evening I was feeling a bit low and I just wasn't feeling like serious books so I looked at the list of fantasy books I want to read and I came across Tress of the Emerald City by Brandon Sanderson and I had heard a lot of people say that it is funny and cute and it's not that big it's a little over 400 pages which for a fantasy is not that big so I thought I would give that one a go I've never read Brandon Sanderson before so far I've read part one which is like just 50 pages I think and I am laughing so much is a laugh out loud kind of book I'm having so much fun. So we follow Tress, who is 16 years old and who lives in this fancy world where, first of all, there are a lot of moons. But most importantly, I think she lives on this rock where habitation is quite difficult. I, I don't have to explain the world to you, but she lives on this rock and no one who lives on this rock is allowed to leave because you have the Duke who lives on the castle on the rock and he kind of prevents people from leaving. His son pretends to be a groundskeeper and befriends Tress. The son is called Charlie. Tress kind of knows that he is the son because he's such a bad liar. It's really funny, it's hilarious. I like the narrator. It's just, it's so much fun. I'm having such a good time. It's a five star prediction. Honestly, I cannot wait to just pick up my Kindle and keep on reading because I bought it on my Kindle. I mean, it wasn't cheap, but I wanted to read the fantasy and I didn't want to wait until a book would arrive. I can only get the UK edition from here, but I love the US edition. If I really like it, I want to get the US edition. Because we do have some Brandon Sanderson in the house, but all of it is boys. He really loves sci-fi and he likes Brandon Sanderson's style as well. So maybe he'll read this one too, although cute fantasy isn't really his thing. Also, I got like this really cute little desk fan because it is too hot in here during the summer to edit and stuff. And I can just like put this in front of my face and it's pink. Talking about pink, I will probably go to see Barbie tonight. But because I'm feeling so poorly, I don't know if it's going to happen. But we got the tickets. I hope they're refundable if I don't feel well enough. I really want to see Barbie, so I hope that my body is going to give me a break today. Because I'm still a little bit in the middle of a flare-up. And it's been uncomfortable and stressful and just not a good time overall like physically my body is like sit on the sofa and read all day watch tv and eat healthy food and mentally i'm like oh my gosh let's go out let's do fun things it clashes and when i'm listening to my body i get depressed and when i listen to my mental state i get a flare-up so it's it's so frustrating and so annoying and I'm trying, I've been trying for 10 years to find a balance. It's impossible to be honest so I don't know how I'm going to do it today. I'm just gonna look at every day individually and see what rings the most. Sometimes I do prioritize my mental health over my physical health and the next day it sucks really hard but at least I don't feel depressed. I hope that reading a fantasy will kind of cheer me up today. I thought it'd be fun to show you how I add art into my home or just generally. So these frames I got at a thrift store for 99 cents a piece. This one is a definite favorite. I mean, 
it's so cute and i have a bit of a blank space right there now i'm going to add trim just like i did downstairs in the future but not right now so what i've done is i made a cross with painters tape so i know that they all hang in symmetry in the middle some prints i have some i still have to purchase like digital prints but then this is what i'm going to put up there this is of course the jane Eyre one that's already in the frame this is one from beloved by tony morrison a quote and i liked the art at the top this is a wuthering high print and this is one of those ladies who do bubble gum i've always loved that concept but it's never worked in a space i wanted it to be what i wanted to do is have some pink and red in every picture because of course the pink of this wall but it was getting a little bit too busy so i decided to also add one that is black and white and i think i'm liking this so far so i'm going to put it up this wall is not concrete most of our walls are concrete just using a hammer and nails to hang them up With it it's really cute i may have to like rearrange this for a bit so that it flows better but i'm really happy how this empty space is now filled up i might message the etsy seller if she can resize that one for me because as you can see the text doesn't flow in perfectly i don't know let me know which one is your favorite i think the bubblegum lady i mean she has to be my favorite right just finished book number is it 18 i think so and that is the essay collection by joan didion and oh my gosh i love this i love joan didion's voice i don't think this is the highest rated essay collection that she written on goodreads but i gave it 4.5 stars because i just loved how she took one subject and just went wild with it. It's very much reminded me in the way that Virginia Woolf wrote about subjects in The Common Reader, where she's very focused on certain subjects. And in this collection, John Gideon mainly focuses on people. The last essay was on Martha Stewart, and she talked about a lot about how feminism relates to what Martha Stewart was doing. Not in a way that she, I think, used the word feminism, but that she was saying that Martha Stewart was doing more than being the ideal housewife. And she was very much discussing how she got a lot of criticism and how John Gideon didn't agree with that the funniest thing is that that essay was written in 2000 and in 2004 <laughs> martha stewart went to prison i'm curious to see how joan didion react to that four years later because she praises martha stewart so much but i had a great time with this so i thought okay let's stay in the essay swear and i started listening to something by roxanne gay i don't remember the title right now halfway through to that one well i was trying to curl my hair and this is what happened like my hair has a mind of its own. But yeah, I am so far behind with this challenge now. I honestly don't think I'm actually going to be able to pull it off because I have some bigger books on the TBR as well. And I don't feel like not reading those bigger books because I'm excited for them. I want to read them. So why would I just rush read short books just so I can do this challenge? That is not why I started doing this. I'm still loving the Brandon Sanderson book. I'm about 40% of the way through. Right now the main character is making some choices that feel a little bit YA cliche heavy, but I'm sure it will be rectified. I don't know. I love the beginning more than where I'm at now, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes i still just want to sit my ass back down and read it so that's what i'm going to do right now i have been doing some serious catching up i listened to two audiobooks today both of them were one hour long i really enjoy both of them because they are by formidable writers the first one i listened to is a long essay by roxanne gay 
And Wait is a very long title. Writing into the wound, understanding trauma, truth, and language. And it basically does what it says. Roxane Gay talks about the response she has gotten from other writings like Bad Feminist, which is something I read. Hunger, which is not something I read. A lot of responses of people and press and journalists on her body, on her trauma and how to write well on trauma. It's not like she's giving you a guide, but she's talking about the intention that you can have when you're writing about trauma. That while you're doing it, it's also important to be gentle. Mm, not gentle, it's important to be aware of the reader and not traumatize yourself while writing it and not traumatize your reader while they are reading it. And she talks about teaching at Yale and talking about these subjects in her classes. I found it super interesting. I don't enjoy Roxane Gay's voice as much as I enjoyed Joan Didion's voice, but they wrote about quite similar themes, I think, and I was just really in the mood for something like that. And then, if you have seen my last vlog, you know I've read some things by Ellie Smith. I finished the seasonal quartet. There was a one hour audiobook by Ellie Smith, both written and narrated by her. And oh my gosh, I love her narration. It's so fun and playful. This is a children's book about the story of Antigone or the retelling of Antigone, The Hard Name to Say, which is also a play by Sophocles and Ellie Smith used that play to do her retelling. Antigone is a girl who stood up against a king. Ellie Smith chose to have a crow narrate the story to other crows. And I really enjoyed that. The audiobook had sound effects as well. I would highly recommend listening to the audiobook if this sounds like something you would enjoy. I can't really tell a lot about the plot. It's just like a myth retelling. Enjoyed the narration again from Ellie Smith. Ellie Smith had such a different voice than I thought she would have. I knew she's Scottish, but her voice was so playful and youthful and I just really enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun. It's Friday today and I mainly want to focus on Tress of the Emerald Sea, but I do hope to maybe tomorrow read The Trial by Franz Kafka or at least start it and then finish it early next week. Of course, I'm also still listening to Pride and Prejudice. No idea how far I'm in. Not yet halfway through, I think, but of course I'm still really enjoying this and I will wrap this up in next week's vlog. Yeah, I will come back to you, I think, on Sunday and let you know if I finish anything else. Maybe I will do one more short read so that I'm fully caught up. For now, I am happy with how it's going. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the last day of this vlog. I have not caught up as much as I wanted to, but I did read another short work by a very beloved author. Not necessarily beloved by me, but I'm on my way there. I think, and that is Margaret Atwood. I read a short story by her called Two Scorched Men. We follow a writer who tries to tell the story of two men and their experiences during the Second World War, and apparently this was based on Atwood's own life. This was the kind of short story that tried to do a lot, but didn't do a lot. Sounds super fake, but I think it tried to tell a lot, but it didn't really connect to me. The two characters, I think the description says it perfectly. John, a hot-headed Irishman who served in a Royal Navy during the Second World War and barely survived the deadly battles in the South Pacific. And Francois, a wry and affable Frenchman who was once an operative in the French resistance and led a life shaped by tragedy. It sounds interesting, but maybe a little bit more material for a novel or a novella than for a short story, because this was only 29 pages long. I think it's normal for a short story, but it did fall a little bit flat for me, in a sense that I just didn't really get such a great feeling of the characters, and I didn't really feel like you got the middle, beginning, end feeling of a story. Overall, I just didn't really like this. My love for Margaret Atwood has also not been kindled yet. So I gave this three stars, but did read another short work by a famous author, which um, I've been really enjoying this week. I did continue reading the Brendan Sanderson, which kind of started to still a little bit for me. I got 60% of the way through, but where the beginning of this novel was really fast paced, I don't really feel the stakes that much because our main character goal for why she does what she does it changes a little bit and I'm not enjoying it as much. I feel like I'm losing the plot a little bit. So I'm curious to see what the other 40% will do, but I will talk to you about that next week. I did finish my reread of Pride and Prejudice and of course a glowing five star. It's so amazing how Mr. Darcy and Lizzie Bennet are written. They are so real. They really come to life on the page. Their characters, their relationships, like the beginning of romance, of romance novels, romance in stories. It's so believable but also not because it's also so fictional in its core in the sense that Darcy and Lizzie have set up something for us to just 
just swoon over. I just, I love Mr. Darcy so much because he is so incredibly awkward. And then the way he crops up all of his love, especially in the end when he explains his behavior, how that links to the way he was raised. It's just, it's so beautiful and Lizzie. I love Lizzie so dearly. I would like to say that I feel like I am like Lizzie, but she is like 10 levels cooler than I am. I did like the mayor Meyer Briggs personality test. We are the same, Lizzie and I, which makes me feel good about myself. Not sure I believe in all those personality things, but I would love to be like Lizzie. <laughs> the way she sends up to people of higher rank, like chef's kiss. I think it took me reading this book three times to really see the right balance and intention of the parents because I was always like oh Mr. Bennett is so witty and Mrs. Bennett is so naggy but I think that Mrs. Bennett is actually for her capabilities she makes a lot of sense throughout this novel and she is never portrayed that way especially in adaptations but I think Mrs. Bennett there's really something to say for her reasoning because she wants truly the best for her daughters in the way that she wants them to be secure. She doesn't want them to fall into poverty, which Mr. Bennett um, is kind of the cause of, of that possibility, because he is really shit with money. He is also shit with supporting his wife. I mean, he may be witty, but he's completely useless. At least Mrs. Bennett is trying to secure the future of her daughters and is trying to secure their happiness as best as she can. I think it's equivalent of a mother being very persistent about an education, about a degree, which can be very annoying, but it's also very understandable from Mrs. Bennett's perspective, especially because she doesn't have any means of her own to help her daughters once her husband dies. There's nothing she can do for them. And she has a lot of daughters. So honey, I get your stress in that time. Um, and I have a newfound respect for Mrs. Bennett and a new dislike for Mr. Bennett and an ultimate love for Lizzie. Like I can talk forever about Pride and Prejudice. It's my ultimate favorite and I didn't really participate in Jane Austen in July this year. Unintentionally did we're reading my favorite Jane Austen. And now of course I want to reread everything but I think I will listen to Sense and Sensibility next sometime soon because I got a beautiful edition of that one and I would love to just look at the illustrations and I think the letters are handwritten in my edition as well while listening to it. So if you have not read Pride and Prejudice, oh my gosh, do yourself the favor and do so. You're gonna have an amazing time if you like romance. So that leaves me with, I think, only one book behind on schedule. So yeah, next week. It might be a bit stressful. Honestly, I have no idea what next week is going to be. I do think I'm getting out of my flare-up, so fingers crossed. That would be so lovely because then I can really give my all next week. There's no telling <laughs> when it comes to that. For now, thank you so much for watching this vlog. If you have any thoughts on the books that I talked about, I would love to hear from you in a comment down below. I hope that you have a lovely, lovely day or evening. Doei! Woo!